there's five different types of wood in here, which is unique. Got everything in here that I need. I got my table saw, my chop saw. Most of the time when people come in here, they think, where do you sleep? Hi, I'm Jim. I have this eight and a half by 20 cargo trailer that I built myself and converted into a tiny house. So let me give you a tour. Welcome to my tiny house on wheels. I'm a self-employed carpenter, so this is what I do. I basically did this all myself in about two months. The cab, this veneer is actually is African Zebrano, which when I worked in the shipyard, I got this in sheets of veneer, the leftovers. So we could buy it, so that's what I did. And I've been saving it for probably the last 10, 15 years just for this. This is just birch plywood i just edged the, put the veneer on i get a lot of compliments on it because of the wood i didn't put any door pulls on it because i don't like door pulls these were kind of it, it took me a couple of weeks to build these cabinets because they're up in the v in the nose and there's nothing square in a cargo trailer like this so i had to build it basically one piece at a time and build it in place the air conditioner is in here um, it's just a portable Honeywell air conditioner, so I'll show you that. So that's, it works pretty good. It actually keeps it pretty cool in here. I got a pretty good um, storage space in here. This, I put the shelf in, the shelf goes all the way through. I mean, it's kind of a mess in there, but um, I wanted the shelf so I could have extra storage. And I do have a lot of storage in here. And even down below, I mean, I have the, the four drawers, which Again, there's a lot of crap in there because when you live tiny, that's how it works. These cabinets on the corner here are only, they're kind of like a little triangle in there, but there's still, it's extra storage space. And I stuff in there whatever I can and where I you know need to. And I like it simple. So this is, I have one pan. It's all I need. I can cook anything I need in there. I can even make spaghetti in here. I have this one burner butane cook plate, which works perfect and it fits just in there nice. That was kind of an accident because when I built the cabinets, I wasn't really planning for that because I didn't even have that at the time, but it works out awesome. I got the toaster oven, but I don't use it much, but it's kind of handy for, you know, I can make pizza in there or whatever, you know, simple. And I like it simple, so that's what I do. This cabinet I kept, I didn't put the shelf in here, but it's in all the other ones because for cereal boxes or something taller, I you know, I could put that in there. Right here, I got the the two USB outlets here. I got one on this side, one on this side, so that I can plug in whatever USB, you know, my phone or, or iPad or computer or whatever I need to. I just put the microwave up here temporarily. Um, eventually, I'm gonna build more cabinets here, and I built this composting toilet too, which is gonna go on the bottom, and then the refrigerator will go on top of that, and then the microwave these three things are going to be all in like one cabinet and then i'll put another cabinet next to it the bug shield i drove semi for 10 years so that was my cb handle so that's why that's on there the fridge is small i mean it's it's only four cubic feet but it works fine for me i mean i'm kind of a diet mountain dualaholic but it works good it's perfect The biggest challenge that I, that I found was getting rid of everything from my house. I lived in the house for 25 years and I moved into an area that's basically 15 by 8 inside. So I had to downsize a lot. And I lived in it while I was building it, which was tough. I had a foot and a half of crap inside this trailer from the front to the back. I'll never do it that way again if I ever do decide to do another one because you have to move everything from one side to the other or the front to the back or from inside to outside. Plus I had all of my tools. It was a pain, but you do what you gotta do. This is eventually gonna be a couch. It kind of, everything in here kind of serves two purposes. So this is storage underneath, which is kind of a junk hole right now. Most of the time when people come in here, they look at this and they look at this wall they see the picture of my Corvette on there and they, they think, where do you sleep? So I went to Harbor Freight 
and uh, I wanted a Murphy bed. So I went to Harbor Freight and I got a ATV winch and I mounted it in the back in the garage, which I'll show you that later. And it actually has a remote control. And I made this picture frame with a finger pull on the back side of it because I have to pull on it a little bit. It's kind of noisy, so I'm gonna put it down. It just hooks in on the bottom here on a little um, grommet thing. And then I unhook it and just toss it in the back. I didn't do a traditional Murphy bed with the, the Murphy bed hardware. I just put hinges on the bottom, butt hinges, and when it folds up, it goes tight against the wall. So that's why there's that, um, like a foot gap between the back of the bed and the back wall. I didn't know what to do in the back here. So I figured I'd put these little shelves in here and I'm kind of a t-shirt junkie. So I folded up all my t-shirts and I put them on both sides. And I wanted the idea that the bed, when it went up, it disappeared and it kind of does that. These are actually storage. These lift off, they just kind of sit there and I got little pegs on it that hold them in place. The other side, I put pillows and blankets and stuff in because I don't want to have that stuff laying around. I'm kind of picky about not having a lot of extra crap laying around. I'm a self-employed carpenter, so I build everything in my head, kind of a blueprint in my head before I even start. And this was all kind of figured out except for kind of this with the Murphy bed and stuff. I didn't exactly know what I was going to do there until I started building it. There's actually five different types of wood in here. The cabinets are African Zebrano. The door frame and the top of these are ebony. The window frames are wenge. And then I have the knotty pine. And then the floor and the, the trim around the, the step for the door where you come in, that's oak. If you're thinking about doing something like this and, and you're younger, older, like I'm older, I should have done this 25 years ago. All the while I've been doing this, you know, for this last almost a year now, all I think about is why didn't I do this sooner? If you're a young person, you find yourself a remote job, buy a bus, buy a cargo trailer, convert it, live the dream. This is, this is it. You can work on the road, you can see the country, just do it. Don't wait. This is the garage. It's eight feet wide inside, five and a half feet deep. Like I said before, I'm a self-employed carpenter, so I take all my tools with me wherever I go. I can drop this tailgate and I can basically build a house if I wanted to, or if I needed to, less the materials, of course. Got everything in here that I need. I got my table saw, my chop saw, all my hand tools. Over here, I got all my clamps for building cabinets and stuff. I am a cabinet maker too. Levels. Um, I do have a diesel heater in here, which that's the tank for there. This is the ATV winch that raises and lowers the bed. Uh, like I said, it, again, it's just a Harbor Freight ATV winch. It works awesome. Eventually, I'm thinking about putting a shower in here. Um, I was going to put it inside, but I, I like the big open room in there. When I started this, well, it'll be a year in November. Um, I went down to Georgia. When I, once I got mine, my trailer done, um, two months it took me to do this. And then I started helping other people working on their buses, or I helped the gal work on her van. Um, so I plan on doing that when I go traveling in the wintertime. I, I come up here, I live in Wisconsin. Um, I got work lined up and I stay up there, up here, and I work during the summer, make enough money to hopefully survive on over the winter. Then I plan on going down south or west, I'm not sure yet, and then working on vans or buses or whatever I can find. Eventually, I'm gonna put solar on here so I can be completely off the grid. I have lights back here. Um, I have an outlet here and hopefully I can just plug my tools in here with the solar and I can just do what I need to do right from the back of the trailer. Right now um, I have a shore power plug on the, it's, it's between the wheel wells kind of like so it's hidden so you don't really see it but I just plug in and I use a generator or I plug into an outlet somewhere wherever I'm at if I can but the solar is the ultimate goal. Thanks for coming and 
see my little tiny house on wheels. My Instagram is Cheesehead Traveler, if you wanna follow me on Instagram. Hopefully we'll meet on the road somewhere, and if you, if you see me, by all means, stop and say hi.